10 Spooky Pumpkins by Gris Grimley. One, two, three, four, five. 10 Spooky Pumpkins by Gris Grimley. Once upon a time, a day turned to night. A little girl stepped into the twilight. The wind said swoosh and the gate went creak. The owl cried who and the night sighed eek. 10 spooky pumpkins sitting in a line looking for a cat and they found nine. Nine black cats creep along the gate looking for a bat and they found eight. Eight screeching bats soaring in the heavens looking for a goblin and they found seven. Seven greedy goblins full of naughty tricks looking for a ghost and they found six. Six hallowed ghosts wiggle and writhe looking for a wolf and they found five. Five wild wolves running o'er the moor looking for a skeleton and they found four. Four foolish skeletons lounging in a tree looking for a witch and they found three. Three toothless witches stirring up the brew looking for a scarecrow and they found two. Two skinny scarecrows having some fun dancing in the field with everyone. Then One full moon rose, bright, big and bright. Woo, went the wind and the creatures ran in fright. Alone was the moon on Halloween night. The wind whispered swish and the gate latch creep. The owl sighed, whoo, we were all fast asleep. And here is a note from the artist. It says, artist note. I've been intrigued by what lurks in the shadows for as long as I can remember. But I believe this ethos took root at the age of five in 1980. Every generation idolizes their youth and I'm no exception. The 80s were a great decade to grow up in, especially as a child fascinated by monsters. It was a time when the veil between reality and the supernatural was a little thinner. And wherever you wanted to go, you could get there on a bike and with your imagination. There was no season more dangerous and adventuresome than autumn. I lived in a small Midwest farming town that hid amongst golden crisp cornfields and the fiery wall of wilderness that followed the great Elkhorn River. Time when the red brick movie theater swelled with rowdy children for Saturday matinees and the dime store was the juvenile stomping ground and supplier of Marvel comics, Cracker Jacks, Bazooka Joe, and genuine scar stuff. Main Street would shut down for one afternoon so that children of the community could flaunt their mostly do-it-yourself costumes in the annual Halloween parade. The decorated night unleashed upon the community every tiny breed of monstrosity to run ruthlessly from house to house across still streets and over-trotted lawns to raid the inhabitants for treats. Those that were fortunate to deliver were spared, but homes that were barren or left darkly vacant because became victims to toilet paper showers, pumpkin smashing, or any other number of deviant tricks. It was a time when homemade popcorn balls and caramel apples were still handed out, and peanut butter flavored taffy and black and orange wrappers were appreciated. When the homes had been cleaned out and porch lights extinguished, a walk through the silent town would follow, leaving a trail of empty wrappers behind. The creaking gates of the cemetery on the hill beckoned brave children to pass through for a moonlit stroll, ghost stories, or a game of dare. The next morning, Halloween seemed all but a passing dream, a hazy memory of a distant life. I now have children of my own who inspire me daily. This spooky countdown book was roused by them. The Five Little Pumpkins song my son learned in preschool and the innocent curiosity imbued in my daughter. Recollections of my own Childhood Halloweens were stirred into the brew to conjure a young girl's call to adventure, a rite of passage that awakens her in the magical world that comes alive when children sleep safely in their beds on Halloween. And the dedication says, for my daughter. And there are six, seven, eight, 
9, 10 on the end pages. Thank you for listening.